Welcome back. Now, a year ago, the theories about da the dangers of 5G had barely pierced the public's consciousness. However, in recent times, claims about the risk associated with the next generation mobile technology has gone mainstream, with claims linking 5G to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, there's been different theories of the 5G technology, and some of us are in a state of confusion as to the validity of these claims. Now, we have three experts today, <laughs> but our first guest, Wale Abu, he's the is the Chief Executive Officer of Pan-African Towers Limited. Um, prior to his appointment, he served as the Vice President of Sales at Airtel Nigeria. He's a very experienced leader and a force in the telecom sector. He hopes to bridge the gap in connectivity in Africa. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, let me start with the basic. First of all, I'm, I'm, I've been shouting it that 5G, <laughs> I'm just confused because you go online, you go on social media, you see so many like fact-backed conversations claiming that 5G is linked to COVID-19, you know. so. Quickly, maybe we should start with the basic. What is 5G? That was just for somebody that doesn't even know what 5G is about. What is it? Okay, so every um, generation, 5G, the G means generation. Okay. So in order to organize telecoms, the bodies, you know, you have a lot of bodies that superintend over telecommunications the GSMA. Yeah. The, so for example, 1G will describe a certain protocol, a way of doing things. It's just like you have your Toyota car. If you want to use a basic example, yeah. if you take a Toyota car, you know, the Corolla has a particular model. Absolutely. So you, it's a model. So you say maybe the 1978 model, so you know what you're talking about. You say 2000 model, you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If you say you're driving a 2019 model of Corolla, you, you know, know it it's the same Corolla. So 1G, for example, is voice only. So you recall when telephones where you could only use them to make a voice Not call. <laughs> exactly. So that protocol is 1G. Okay. Then technology became better. Because it's not just telecoms that has to get better. Yeah. Handsets, microprocessors, several okay. things have to get better too. So they had handsets that had keypads that you could type with and digital technology that could transmit text and screens that you could now read with. That became 2G. You could now do voice and you and could text. now do text. Okay. Then... Things got better. People like BlackBerry came. You remember BlackBerry? Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> Samsung First Blue smartphone. <laughs> exactly. So they came, had larger screens, had some more intelligence, had some software around it, and you could actually take pictures and Quite send pictures. it. You know, and so pictures came. If you recall, they couldn't do videos, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Then it went to 3.5, it went to 4. Now with 4G, you can do streaming you Everything. can you have a whatsapp video you can talk to someone immediately so now with that basically is about the speed of data everything that you transmit really over radio with is data voice is digitized the picture becomes a bit you know you're just sending information in digital format that's decoded at the other end mm -hmm. so we've now reached 5g what is 5g basically as things have gotten better Supercomputing has gotten better. You can now have your maybe iPhone X. It's this mini computer. The kind of processing capacity and the camera and code I had were professional level maybe in the 70s. You know, you needed a whole room to, be able to <laughs> you know, put that. that kind of capacity in there. So it can process faster now. You, so if you have a 5G phone, that's not a 5G phone, by the way. So 5G phones will come that can do so much more. You've got things like 3D printing now. Absolutely. You've got biomedicine. Mm. So you've got robotics. You've got artificial intelligence, machine to machine. So what's happening is that 5G is a protocol that will allow you to connect these machines. 
to be able to do more work. So today, what um, you do maybe with so much manual intervention, let's say something that you really need precision for, like heart surgery. Heart surgery is manual, but you know, you have machines that have learned everything that have, they can be more precise than human beings, mm -hmm. but somebody needs it's to on the code it exactly. Yeah. So you actually have things like that that will now run on communication technology and you don't need a second delay because it can lead to a loss of life. Absolutely. So those are the kind of use cases for 5G. You can actually have someone put a robot in Lagos to perform an operation and he's sitting in New York and saying, okay, start this pro process, start this and it hmm. will happen. <laughs> so it is about communication, it's about speed. So it's about a thousand times more speed. I mean, it has more capacity. That's why they call it gigahertz capacity. Mm -hmm. So I heard you mention about the speed with which you download a film. So what you have is that you had a pipe where like your straw now, where you had just one, maybe it's just 0 0.5 millimeters diameter. Now you have, you know, this storm pipe. drain. Of course, uh, once, two seconds so, you can, so once you put on the tap, you can fill your tank in, in two it, seconds. It's, so it's just about capacity. So it is that, uh, I think, in trying to sell it, to say it's such a great idea, well, people yes. have now scared people like, wow, if it is so fast, so great, it must be like a bullet, then it must hurt me. <laughs> exactly. You know? And... No. That's, yeah, this, this um, brings me to the next question, obviously. I mean, you've said all these amazing things that we should anticipate for 5G, and it's all looking good and looking fantastic for the tech world particularly. But um, is, it, is it harmful? There are so many theories out there, starting with, I was reading somewhere that even high-tension poles can cause barrenness <laughs> in women, and then 4G gave a rise to cases of cancer, cancer. in the world. So now this 5G radio um, um, magnetic radiation is going to increase radiation, which is not good for the human body. So are there health, um, health hazards that comes with 5G network? Before I answer that question, I will tell you that, okay, where, how old is 5G? Where has it been deployed? It's barely a year old. So when I, you say, does somebody have a health hazard? I would say, okay, I would say 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G. It's like having a family, and 5G is the latest child. You say, is this child going to turn out to be a killer? So I can tell you that well, he's still a baby. The father was a, a pastor, the mother was a lawyer, the first child is a doctor. There's no evidence that shows that this fellow is coming from a family that's going to kill. That's to put it in a... To kind of illustrate it. Eh? So you're saying the world doesn't know the effect of 5G? You yet. can't tell because you have to have a longitudinal study over time. Okay. It's, you, can't, you can only say, oh, so it's a hypothesis that what okay. could it cause? And in science, you're always open to, okay, could it cause something? But you have to have a basis. So we step back and say, why, what will make it cause something at all? It has to be the energy. It has, it has to have the force to hurt you. So the question is that does 5G have the power to hurt humans? No, because you now go back to what is called the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. That is where all waves, everything called a wave, anything is in the world, it has been mapped, it's not new. Hmm. The electromagnetic spectrum starts from the low frequency to the very high end of it. So radio waves are at the low end of it. Before visible light, before sunlight. Your sunlight is actually... It's actually a, a radiation. Yes, it's wave. also radiation. Mm -hmm. And it's more powerful than but radio it's not waves. Okay. I so that's it. what I'm saying. So first, from a physical point, because they are un that's physics, universal points. If you say something is going to fall, if I drop this glass, it's going to fall. Definitely it's not no, going to float. Yeah. <laughs> so if you say, suppose it floats, I won't say you're stupid. I'll say, okay, Maybe there's well, science behind what will make it float? There are conditions under which it will float. That's zero gravity. Mm -hmm. But today, with what we know, radio waves are non-ionizing. So the first thing you look out for is, 
as a wave, what is its characteristics? At what speed does it travel? What power does it have? How is it going to affect a human? It must be absorbed by your skin. Before it must it go can, through you before, before it, it damages anything. something inside of okay. you. Okay, we're going to continue the conversation, but we have um, <laughs> Benga Dubayo. He's joined us via Skype. He's the current chairman of the Association of Licensed Telecom Operators of Nigeria and Industry Association for All Telecom Operators in Nigeria. And Benga, are you there? Yes, good evening and thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for joining <laughs> us this evening. So uh, have you been listening to our conversation? Yes, I've been following the instructive explanations provided by my friend and brother <laughs> Wale in the studio. Awesome. Hi, Benga, awesome. How are so, you? <laughs> it, so what what is your um, what your take about the 5G theory and why do we have so much conspiracy around the 5G? Bearing in mind that, I mean, according to what we read, because I, I, I've not been to Wuhan, but what we read was that the first blanketed um, 5G um, network has, was completed in Wuhan, and that's why people are linking this um, 5G to the coronavirus. But what's your take on that? There is no relationship between 5G and coronavirus. And there is no relationship between um, electromagnetic transmission and the uh, virus transmission. Um, telecommunications goes by electromagnetic waves. Coronavirus, from what we have been told, goes from human to human. And so telecom does not carry virus and cannot transmit virus. But I think the unfortunate thing at this time is that because the world is under this fear of uh, epidemic of uh, coronavirus, they haven't been able to give us any reasons for it. And everyone is looking for anything to hang it on. And the nearest they can is that infrastructure that is, that is closer to all of us, which is telecommunication. So there is no relationship whatsoever, whatsoever between them. And uh, just further to the explanation provided by uh, my friend and brother in the studio, the speed of transmission is just the difference between the current generation of 4G and the next generation of 5G that we have. As he has explained, we had 1G, 2G, 2.5G, 3G, uh, now we are running partly between 3G and 4G. And 5G is just the next generation after that. If none of the preceding generations were harmful, there's no reason why the next generation will be harmful. So on the other side of it is that those who are supposed to bring messages of hope, they are bringing message of fear, and that's why we have what we have. The Wahoom is the first city in, um, in China where they said uh, 5G is tested, but also there are other cities in China that does have 5G, that doesn't have the kind of impact of coronavirus that, like they had in Wahoo. There are also countries of the world today that are suffering from the impact of coronavirus that do not have 5G. So we can't relate them in any way. And the public should just be aware that this is just a fair mongering. Uh, they are baseless. And science is, the, is not fiction. Fiction is not science. So if once it's not backed up by any empirical evidence, we cannot say that it is harmful and we cannot have that, those conclusive studies. As we have been told, telecommunications is in the non-organizing band. And the kind of radiation you get from telecom services is not far from what you get from the domestic TV appliance at home, not far from what you get from your electric bulb, not far from what you get from your microwave at home. Even microwave are even regarded to be a lot more harmful than telecommunication sickness. So the sickness from telecom services are as friendly as they can be. And because of the international regulations that we have, we are all guided by the protocols of International Telecommunications Union. And all of these are backed up by a lot of studies and extensive studies as to the friendly nature of telecom service to humans. So Nigeria is not an exception. We are signatories to these protocols. We comply by all their standards and regulations. And there is no reason why uh, a sort of 5G in Nigeria should be considered as the spread of a, a coronavirus epidemic. Now, the CV-19, uh, the coronavirus, it's a plague. It's a virus. And people should run away from it. People who are taken to isolation, they have not been taken to resort centers. They've been taken to places where they are quarantined and kept away from society because of the harmful nature of the disease that they carry. Telecom doesn't transmit this disease at all. All right. Okay, so quick question. Do we have 5G currently in operation in Nigeria? We don't have. We have we've concluded free trials. Our free trials were done sometime last year in Abuja and in Lagos. 
and now the experts are looking at their compiling the reports which will be sent to government based on the outcome of the recommendations government will decide on when to proceed but as to speak today we do not have any 5g coverage in nigeria there okay, are no well, sites that are running on 5g as we speak right is it possible that there is um a popular religious leader have put it out there that the federal government put Lagos and Abuja yeah. and Ogun State on lockdown because they're trying to install 5G. Would you say this is true? I'm sorry, this is not true. Um, it's not, uh, 5G is not a service that will arrive overnight by night bus. But there are certain processes that will be followed, there are procedures to be, to be followed before you can have new deployment. And what we have done last year is to do field trial, which is normal in any new in the introduction of any new service before a commercial launch is done. And the outcome of the trial is being will be studied. Accommodation will be made to government. So there is no relationship between the lockdown that we have and, and 5G, because 5G is not a service that will arrive overnight by night bus. Um, there is a process that will be followed. There will be new hardware to be deployed. There will be new transmission infrastructure in some cases to be built. And there are certainly some steps to be taken. And even when they are deployed, when it's fully deployed, the NCC, our regulator, needs to do what we call site approval before sites are commissioned for commercial use. And those approval guidelines are laid out in a way that it conforms with international best standard as friendly as should be as should be to our environment and to humans. All right, so um, I, I was watching a video on, on social media and... I mean, someone was breaking down 5G and the coronavirus, and he says every pandemic in the last 150 years, right, um, for every pandemic in the last 150 years, there was a quantum leap in the electrification of the earth. And that caused an introduction to the, uh, what's it called, is it radio waves and all of that. For goodness sake, when we watch all of these things, it, it looks like the, 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 the facts are just adding up, and it keeps me in a state of, okay, who to believe, right? So... We can't just rule out the fact that, you know, it was the introduction of all of these things that has brought about certain kinds of sicknesses that we never used to have before as humans. So what do you say to these kinds of, um, what's it called, theories or explanations that they try to give to us? And also, yeah. sorry, to add to that question, one of it said that virus uh, uh, excretion of toxic cells in the body and these toxic uh, uh, cells are birthed by radiation when so you know do we see how the body. With us? if they not are, maybe they are, they are looking for what to say they are looking for what to say and they are looking for where to hang this issue of coronavirus unfortunately they brought it brought it to the wrong place now it's normal that human activity impact on the environment that's general i've heard your introduction today uh, saying that driving through Tomilan bridge the ocean was as blue is as blue as it has never been that's also to show you that human activity does have impact on our ecosystem. But it's not telecommunications that affect our lives. Telecom has come to change the way we do things and the way we live. And so telecom services has come to be one of those features that, that has created modernity. One of those features that has brought modern life, modern comfort, and one of the features that has connected the world together. So in an attempt to, to make the issue look nice, they will bring up theories of why it happened before how it happened before. But all of these are not backed by any empirical evidence. And again, like I said earlier, science is not fiction, and fiction is not science. Once you can't back it up by any empirical evidence and or results of empirical studies, it's baseless. So these are just hearsay, and they attempt to, to put fear in people. They attempt to make people look like something has come to change your way of life. And more importantly, it's an attempt to divert our attention from the problem that we face. Our common enemy today in the world is coronavirus. It's not telecommunication service. And we almost join hands with government to fight this common enemy that we face. So, right, so on a lighter note, are you, are you on, the, on, on the 4G network right now? or the 5G network, because your, your communication with, with us is quite clear and crisp. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the 4G network. I'm on the 4G All right, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> thank you for having me, thank you. All right, so I think we'll take a quick break, because now, with you, I have one question. Because you kept talking about um, a doctor will be in the US and will be controlling surgery. Are you trying to take our jobs away from us? You know? <laughs> All right, so, you yeah, so uh, there, you we'll know. take that conversation when we, after the break, please stay with us, we'll be right back.